see that. That's I want, true. I want to move on to, to a case involving Governor Quinn, public sector workers and public sector unions, and it has nothing to do with pensions. Oh, That's uh, working its way through the state courts. But this mm -hmm. is a case in front of the Supreme Court, Harris versus Quinn. Mm -hmm. You, Mr. Scodro, were a party to this case uh, in your role as Solicitor General. Um, tell us what's at stake with this case. Yeah, and I should disclose, too, that now working at Jenner and Block, that Jenner represented the, the union party in, in the U.S. Supreme Court as well. Um, this case is also a First Amendment case under the, the speech clause, and this has to do with uh, individuals who work in the home and provide health care. And the question is, uh, if they choose not to join a union, uh, do they nevertheless have to pay what's called a fair share fee, uh, which is uh, something less than the full union membership fee and that money though goes to um, uh, issues of common interest uh, to the union wa bargaining for wage increases and things like that mm -hmm. the question is whether or not the First Amendment in the public employer context where the employer is subject to First Amendment constraints because mm -hmm. it's the government whether or not under those circumstances uh, the First Amendment prohibits uh, a rule that requires those non-union members to kick in those fair share fees mm -hmm. uh, mr. Brecker what do you see as the implication implications uh, of this case? Well, the, the implications are that, uh, you know, uh, it's what the national right to work folks and a lot of uh, folks on the conservative side uh, say is an issue of uh, coerced association. Uh, that uh, it's one thing, as uh, Michael makes the distinction between services that rendered for everybody, that is, the union is performing functions on behalf of folks as opposed to the union making political contributions in favor of one party or another, but uh, in dealing with this latter issue, political uh, contributions or uh, temporary assessments, uh, the court last time, in an opinion by Alito, reflected grave concern over uh, the issue that's posed forthrightly in this case. So what will happen, we don't know, but uh, there may well be a conservative uh, majority here that rules that uh, all of this coerced association uh, fee paying by people who in this case overwhelmingly voted against a union mm -hmm. uh, and it was despite that that Governor Quinn insisted on this executive order that that these folks uh, should have relief from having to make these payments or should be given a, a an individual choice and notice whether to opt in uh, to make the payments. But to be clear, those the, the money that the unions get from these non-unionized members that are paying this fair share fee cannot go to any kind of political speech, correct? That's correct. And I should note there are really two unions in play in the case. And one of the unions, the, uh, uh, the, the members, the, the employees voted to unionize, and the other, uh, they did not vote, vote mm -hmm. to unionize. So you have both in front of the court at the same time.